live. He's like, oh, I see the live thing going. Hello, everybody. How's it going? I'm super excited for today. I got a Red Bull. We're not going to promote Red Bull because you know, they, they got enough promotion for themselves. But anyways, we have a, a really fun little little afternoon surprise thing going on here. So I've got Claude, um, who has been a guest on the Dank Hour at least once before and is planning on coming back multiple times again. And I have let a plant, let's just say, become succumbed to a little bit of an aphid population. Um, and with what you do, Claude, I thought this would be an awesome opportunity to show off these really cool um, new insects that aren't as common in the U.S. that you, I don't think they're available at all. Um, no. So, and we have them here. So I'll kind of let, like, see if I can get some screens. And do you want to talk about them a little bit? And then we'll release them into the wild and see if we can get some shots of them uh, eating some aphids. Exactly. I, I, can grab a couple. I think we're going to see one of them uh, running around. They're, they run like crazy. They're called, the trademark uh, is the crazy mite. It's real name, oh, there you see one. Its real name is Anistis baccarum. Um, it's a cosmopolitan mite. It's a predatory mite. It's like a super predator. Uh, it is uh, larger than other uh, predatory mites that we had before, like Californicus or Swiss Key or Persimilis. It is very, very voracious. Um, it eats aphids, trips, white flies, spider mites, they're testing them right now with cyclamen mites, and um, they also eat mealybugs. Uh, we always have problems with mealybugs because the, the predators we used to have weren't that efficient. But this little friend is really, really something. And the they beauty is going nuts, like they're going crazy. Yes. <laughs> they're called the whirly gig mites because they're always running in the erratic patterns <laughs> in zigzag, and they always mm -hmm. run. They never stop just to eat, and they're always hungry. So, <laughs> you see, perfect. In a, green, in a greenhouse, they will run on the structures. They will hitch a ride on people. They will go from one end to the other end of the greenhouse at lightning speed. Um, they're really, really special because they can walk across spider mite webs to go eat the spider mites and their eggs. Uh, they also uh, look. We see what we see now is an adult. The red, red, redder one. Yeah, you're following him right now. The other ones, I think they're teens because they got four stages uh, in their life. And at each stages, they will eat. Um, so it starts with an egg. The egg hatches. Then the, I would say the baby is there. Then the baby molts. And becomes... Is that an egg that I have kind of on that wood chip right there? Is that what I'm seeing? Uh, no, I don't think. Uh, I think they just put in uh, the, um, the teens and the molting okay. teens, the adults. In the packaging, we we used to sell uh, when we started just a month ago, uh, the first distribution, and we uh, <clears throat> we we used to sell eggs, but finally the eggs um, we don't recommend them anymore. It's better to have the anesthetist adults and teens, and they will lay their own eggs very rapidly, and they always lay their eggs also in a substrate or other cryptic location, so it is never on the plants. And the other beauty of it, if you're using it in cannabis, is that um, it doesn't stick in the trichomes, so it can run everywhere. So that's it's, cool. Uh, that's epic. As often it, you find those bugs, I do a wash just in case afterwards every single time, so I don't like have to find bugs in there. But that's kind of very interesting that they don't stick in quite as well. No, that's it. They don't stick in the trichomes. They don't. Um, uh, they can walk across waxy surfaces or spider mat webs. Um, the only disadvantage we found about them already uh, yet is that they will eat each other if they have nothing to eat. But I mean, so so they play that's the biggest problem. So a lot of predators that I'm aware of, like what they'll usually do, and what kind of the 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 not negative effect, but the the issue with a lot of indoor environments when it comes to using predators is like you'll use a mite and but they won't quite kill everything because they'll want to leave a little bit of food source and then this imbalance happens at one point you just have too much die off and there's not enough predators coming back and i so like can you because these if they're gonna eat everything to the point that there's no more and then eat each other uh they're, they're probably not leaving much behind right they, they, you can use them in a kind of, if you have a big enough garden, you can use them in a kind of in a preventive way. I mean, it could, I mean, if you, um, but um, the, 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 the thing is, is that they, they, they go very well with 
we tested them with uh, uh, Encarcia, with Aphidius, with Californicus, with Swirsky, with Cucumeris, with Persimilis, and they go, uh, like any parent would like to know about their children, they play nice with others. Uh, so, I mean, meaning that they, you can um, add them to an, a program that you already have with, let's say, with Cucumeris, uh, uh, predatory mite against strips, and use them in combination with the Willigy mite, and it will clean the place even faster. And the thing is that what you were talking about, like I have an example. In fact, if you have a spider mite problem and you introduce Persimilis, which was the go-to, the, 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 the best predator against uh, spider mite because it could walk across webs, very voracious. And anybody that's used a uh, beneficial um, once, they, they must have used a Persimilis once at least. Um, but the thing is, the Persimilis will, is amazing to clear hot spots and to walk across webs, but it will always leave one or two left that he won't touch. So we had to add another one, phalasis, that would clean up everything. But now, uh, anesthesis that were really being might, the crazy might, is a game changer. Uh, because, I, 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 um, meaning it won't be a standalone for every pest, but it will be a, an extra, uh, like a super helper, a superhero with a, your other uh, beneficial that you're already using, or by combining them, it, you get even better results. So they cleaned up tents, they cleaned up the micro producer that had a um, spider mite problem in about six to seven days. Oh, wow. It's really, really, uh, we're, we're learning a lot uh, still about him. Um, so, uh, it, especially the introduction rates. Um, the other advantage too it has, it, it can like uh, at 10 degrees Celsius, it's, it's still laying eggs and working and I mean, eating and going around. And that's quite cool in comparison to what the others can handle. So there's also the, the persimmon or like the other mites that are for spider mites in general, they have a humidity and temp range that's really in their ideal zone. So this has got a lot wider of a space to play with. Exactly, exactly. It doesn't, it doesn't need a high humidity level like others to lay its eggs because it was a, a disadvantage in cannabis. You know, you can like bring your humidity levels up uh, in flowering because you don't want any molds or botrytis or powder mildew or thing like that. You got you want a good VPD. So um, meaning if so, uh, you can play it, but this doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to them. The, the, He's chilling out for once, this one right here, and he's a, he looks like a full-size adult, eh? Yes, yes. Exactly. Oh, oh, and he's gone. Oh. <laughs> that wasn't long. So why don't we kind of move on, because we've talked a little bit about this, and let's. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring up the shot for the... Uh, we'll go yes. like this so people don't have to... They're on green now, so they, they want to go and try and pray. <laughs> yeah, so let's, let's try and line up my shot for my aphids that we have a population of going on here. Um, which looks like I'm having a little bit of a lag out at this point in time. And the other thing too is they're so easy to introduce to a garden because um, meaning usually the predators, like, like say for per persimilis, for example, I was talking about, you have to make sure that you put some persimilis on each plant because they won't travel from one plant to the other. Like Californicus would, would travel from one plant to the other, Cucumeris, even if it's not a big, uh, big uh, walker, I mean, it, it doesn't walk much. Um, but uh, with this one, it changes everything. It I, hope, I hope that people appreciate me letting this, letting these bugs go. This situation get so bad. I hope we get some good shots out of this. Here, Otherwise, here. I'm going to regret the decision. <laughs> but I, I know this is going to be awesome. I've been very excited about this for most of the day and yesterday too. So we'll get in there. So there's my, there's my problem. Oh yes. Um, yeah, so they, you know, so we're gonna hit this spot hard because um, mm -hmm. this is my main space, and actually, so all the all the soil ends up going into rotation. So these plants that they're, that we're actually gonna hit first will end up coming out and get put into rotation out here. So the idea being is that they'll kind of spread into this space. I'm gonna put a little bit on my vegetative table, but most of, mostly I'm gonna put it all into one pot because they're just gonna go all over the place, right? There's no worry about them spreading. Um, exactly. So I'm going to put them all in one pot where these aphids are, and hopefully, 
um, I can get my phone back without too many heebie-jeebie problems. Okay, <laughs> which <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I do get like I've I've it's one of those things that I've always tried to work on quite a bit is like heebie-jeebies and like with bugs and stuff like that because I know it's just something that's been implanted over time, so it's always a work in progress with me. But I you know I, I do my best. I do my best. So let's uh so it, is there a suggested way of opening these packages? I know for a lot of um. And I'll show people kind of what the, the whole package that they come in on. Um, I know that a lot of the other things they advise you to like turn the container around, shake it, make sure that, that like I use hypo very often. Second question is, will these eat the hypo hypolasis like in, no. in, in, no. in there no. as well? No. Uh, was, uh, yeah. Now it's called Stratolelaps simitus. And we have Galolelaps gillespie's cousin. They're predatory mites that live in the soil or on on top of the soil, and they won't they won't interfere with each other because they they all the predatory mites that we tested them with gallulas, we tested them with satula, we tested them with persimilis, we tested them with acarsa, we tested them with effigies, we tested okay. them with many many predators and parasitoids, and they 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 play well with each other. It's amazing. They do go after pests. So how much was in this package? At uh, 250 individuals. 250 individuals into this package. So yeah, there's you know, roughly you know a few there, and I'm going to just dump a little bit out on the rest of my garden space here because the packaging you know. has been changing. This is a new package I haven't I didn't seen yet because I just saw the thousand uh, individual because of the pandemic, whatever. I, I'm not at the farm, so. Uh, I saw, I ordered, I know I, the, everything but the bug, but the packaging, it, they changed it to me a couple of times to, to try to get the best right. packaging. It could just get. try and just slip some of that wood chips over into the space. We still got pretty good visual spot yeah. there. Can we see that, Ace, a little bit? Do I need to adjust just a little bit? Um, okay, yeah, now yeah, you're focusing now more on any fits. Okay, now it's uh, blurry. Okay, there we go. Perfect. That's perfect. So I'll close that up. So there, at any moment in time, there's about 250 of these uh, predatory mites in this space. So we're going to see them at some point coming in here. So what are, can you tell me a little bit about, like, because you mentioned to me actually on the phone that it seems that right now aphids are a problem for a lot of people. Uh, oh. And and do you, do you kind of have a hypothesis as to what's going on? It's, a, it's an epidemic. It's a, What happens is that the um, the aphid, like Matthew, could I explain, Matthew Gates could explain maybe more <laughs> the genetic side of it, how they evolve so fast. They're really getting used to the cannabis plant and people are, I mean, they're already cannabis aphid, but I mean, meaning they, they people are training cuttings and that's how they transmit themselves. Mm -hmm. But now it changed, like in Ontario now, they're endemic in certain regions. So they'll reappear in the spring like any other type of aphid. So in fact, they, they appeared the first re, real, um, like the, the cannabis aphid, the, uh, it happened really like in 2016, I think it started to spread. And it was uh, that cannabis cup in Oregon. I don't, I remember, I forgot the name. Uh, a lot of people were left with the special elite strains that were cut. That, that they were little, littered with these aphids that are, were provocative. It, it, somewhere and it seems that we're still learning about these pests uh, um, because it's there's not been enough studies done because it was in cannabis and things like that yeah so now we're catching up you know, on it but the, we know that the cannabis aphid also lays eggs uh, very easily uh, yellow eggs and they turn black after uh, a while and also they will produce winged individuals and this happens when we play with the photo period so it tricks them into believing it's fall. So yeah. uh, people that spray the plants with uh, any pesticide or any fungicide or any uh, thing, even foliar fertilizers will uh, shock them and like they'll start like the, uh, they'll like uh, start something that will. Uh, so they they it's a signal for them to leave, you know. So yeah. that's the why or they need to survive. There's a special situation so like. So they're detecting they, its fall. I got to spread out as much as I can and kind of like, you know, implant what I can. Because do they overwinter? Uh, the, the cannabis aphid? Yes. Yes. 
It does, yes. does it over winter? Yeah. So how does that process work? You know, because like if you, you can play with temperatures a fair bit when it comes to managing pest issues, like going in really high temperatures, I understand that it really screws with their mating systems. So yeah. like, what about, is is there something along those lines when it comes to cold or, you know, are there aphid populations that don't die? Or I mean, just... the, some will, will overwinter, uh, usually in the, the, egg, uh, in the egg form. Mm -hmm. but, uh, some uh, um, will, will um, usually it, it's it is the way that they will overwinter uh, with eggs, but uh, uh, that's there's still a lot of to know about the um, the pattern. I mean, how they will because we haven't seen any eggs hatch yet, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so we don't we know they lay the eggs but we haven't seen them hatch i mean the, the people would destroy the plants where i mean or get rid of the pest itself so there's still a lot to be learned about it um so you have you opened up the, the container yet yeah there we go there's our first one coming in see him there he is here we go action time wait i gotta do i have dramatic music <laughs> Oh, that is not dramatic at all. It, it, my, it could, that's my cinematic music. Oh, God, that's terrible. What about dance music? I think the dance music might be a good choice here. Did you see that first one come out of nowhere, though? That means they're going to start hitting this spot pretty well in a moment. Yes. So kind of have the first ones there. And they're just going to go. And there's quite a few aphids if I look there. They're all the way around the branch. I mean, it's quite gross looking, to be frank. Oh yeah, there's spreading on the new security. This is why. So w one thing I've noticed, you know, I'm the, I'm a big cover crop guy, and we've talked about kind of why I use cover crop. Um, and there's this diversity there. It's because I have populations of you know aphids show up, and usually they'll go for my cover crop before they even approach my plants. These have started to approach one of the plants, so I've been a little bit nervous about the whole situation. But because the cover crop is, I, I had a round where I didn't put as much down or any for a couple of them. So you've seen, oh, I saw a little bump around. So we're going to see them coming up in any second. I'm waiting for this army to show up in a way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yeah, there's something jumping around. Did you release them all? I mean, did you, you just Yeah, I, I unleashed the whole packet into that one pot that we have a view on right now. So they're going to start progressing over there pretty quickly. I can have a little look. I've kind of closed it up so I can see what's going on exactly. You look like a teacher of melanation. How's the view there? Pretty good. Look at those. Uh, I see them coming. <laughs> We give it a moment here and we're going to start seeing some of our action points. I think there's, there's definitely, so will the aphids notice that these predators are coming? Oh yes, they'll, 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 they'll be scrambling, they'll be uh, running for their lives. Okay, so that, that movement might be a sign of the first interaction then. Because really, in general, they're pretty, once they kind of find a spot to hang out and feed, they chill, eh? Exactly, they're like little cows. Like only the rice fruit they fit the really runs. Uh, but they, these quality figures, they fit the, I mean, the one we see in the backdrop there, I mean, yeah. the, the, they go and shoot. They don't run very fast. My cat is fascinated by the aphids. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. I'm very excited. And he was, he really, he started to react when he saw the... The, the, the movement? Yeah, the first one, the, the, the big one, the, the big aphid. That, 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 that comes up. Uh, so what is that? Is that an aphid right there? It looks like it's shedding molt. its exoskeleton, eh? Exactly, it's a molt. It's, it's a one that's a molt there. Yeah. So those are all those. When you have an aphid problem and there's like they seem like they've gone and you see all those white skins around, that's them exactly. evolved. Exactly. They're, it's like uh, dandruff, like kind of uh, It's like the uh, like and what you do is you look up. That's where the aphids are. They yeah. molt four times in their life. And each time they, they, they have their cast in, they leave behind the very exoskeleton. And it's also, um, when, if you're using a bovaria product, like Button Guard or our own biosphere, uh, 
Um, it is important that you reapply it a couple of times because they will mold it up. I mean, they will take it up. That's why it's less efficient sometimes over here with the aphids. That's what I notice. If you do it every two days, if you do a bovaria treatment, then you'll have better success. Um, I think they're compatible, and it's just we're testing them right now, and it seems okay with the bovaria. Mm -hmm. So we use the in combination. Oh, look at these evil fucking things. I yes. hate them so much, man. Evil, evil, evil thing. So they're coming into Canada. What do you think is the point of transmission for these? Do you think it's it's carelessness? Um, it's uh, it's it's coming through on hydroponic shops. Because I was thinking about this the other day. Like as long as you're like things are resting, it's not going to be too too bad. It's this spring weather when we're bringing it all in on our clothes. You know what I mean? Like I feel like that's a good portion of it. There's like six species of uh, that we know that attack cannabis. Uh, one uh, is the rice and the uh, one is the bean aphid, there's the melon aphid, the peach aphid, the cannabis aphid. And the peach aphid and the melon aphid are put together, meaning they eat the plant. But the cannabis aphid is strictly for cannabis. It just goes after cannabis, it just reproduces on cannabis. Yeah, you get a little bit more of those wood chips pushed over there. back it up be, they're shy they don't want to <laughs> they're shy they're waking up and, and and probably it's probably a pretty dramatic event to just get like thrown yeah. into a new environment like this i'm gonna explore it before. Can, okay let me let me zoom it out so people don't have to be like all tripped out because i'm trying to fix the camera a little bit here where is our main population there you are Was kind of where we were hanging out before. <laughs> see if I can see them going into the canopy a little bit and going after other things. But not quite, because they do have a little bit more that are high up. Now I've just gone and made it a mess, haven't I? There we go. That's a pretty good. Yeah, I see a winged individual. A winged aphid. If you usually produce a winged individual when the colony is full, when you want to you have to move on. You want to yeah, out. when they want to spread out there a little bit. That's that one at a different angle there that looks just finishing off its shed, eh? Yes, exactly. So how lying. many times do they do that before they get their wings? For, uh, I mean, they won't always produce that wing individual. It's just okay. that, just certain of them. Uh, they, they molt four times. Okay. And how many molts do the do the um, the crazy um, mites do? Uh, four. Four, the four same. molts. Yeah. From baby to, uh, I would say, preteen, then from teen to, uh, to adult. So this preteen, like, when do they really start getting into eating the aphids and, and larger they, predators? They, they probably, as the babies, are they getting into the aphids there too? They, they eat at each, at each stage, and they prefer to go for the nymphs at first, for the okay. aphids. Because we, we introduced them uh, to a friend's place that we on Galliano uh, mm -hmm. and they had yeah, the trips, aphids and spider mites, and they went for the trips first, and then they started to eat uh, nymphs. Yes. Uh, okay. I am waiting for more news about it uh, because it's all very new. It's right? so less than a month we've been releasing it. Uh, Only a month so far, eh? That's exactly. quite a short period of time as well, isn't it? Exactly. And how it happened, how they found it. Um, they knew about this insect before, that this uh, mite, I mean, and they, it's um, Taro Saito, who is a, 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 somebody who works for a Vineland Research Station in Canada. It's um, a research station for horticulture, and they uh, work on the biological control a lot. And they, it's his daughter that found it, and she, she showed it to dad, and dad said, oh, okay, so he picked them up, and they brought it to the lab, and then it started there. And they, they were amazed about uh, everything it uh, would eat. 
than how very it would be. And then they started to develop it. And then our friends applied Bionomics in BC. Um, they, they, they developed rearing methods for it. And we then test, uh, test it. And now we just read it for, for them across Canada. And they're working on permits to get it into the USA um, uh, with USDA AFIS. Um, and uh, they're doing it uh, right now. They, they had a big debate. That there was a conference in Monterey a couple of days uh, last week uh, for biocontrol. And um, they were talking with the US Fish and Wildlife Service. They have something going up uh, to make them accept. Like the, the predators that are non, they have no problem. I mean, they're non-invasive and things like that that we can use in our garden. What's that looking? A little bit on there. Oh, did I lose it? Let's see what we can do. Because I see some activity, but seeing them like get right into it, I haven't quite seen them go. Mm -hmm. For the aphid population yet. These are kind of. It's also like, I don't think it's going to be a very easy thing to shoot. But I think we'll probably get lucky here at some point. Let's try and reset that camera to that last point. It's not that obvious with the live models that are. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not super easy. Gotta back it up a little bit. My apologies. At least, at least people saw them. Uh, <laughs> in their container. Moving yeah. Around. Well, you know what I'm gonna do is I see some of them are kind of in the lower space. Okay. I'm gonna try and do something like this. Oh, well, you know, uh, maybe what's happening too is that they went into egg laying mode as soon as that we released them. Sometimes. Yeah. So that may be what is happening right now. They're, to, they're, they're exploring a bit and starting to lay their own eggs. If I can, oh, here we go. We got some, we got a couple of meanies floating around this spot here. Which we should see one coming up. He's exploring. Kind of see him. They will go out after white fly adults. That's a pretty amazing. After a white fly adult? Yes. They, 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 they uh, you could see it, the video is on my link page called Robert, uh, and it's called Robert. Yeah. Uh, on LinkedIn, on my link page, you, I posted a video about the, that tarot title I posted at first. And you see it go after aphids, you see it go after trips, you see it go after uh, the white fly adult. Cool. Yeah, because they're they're really quite aggressive when how they how they get into it once they're going. I'm trying to see. They are to follow because they're always running. Through. Yeah, they're very quick. That's one of those things. Is like it's 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 not so, the ladybug that you're trying to. The ladybug. Yeah, ladybugs are easy easy to film there. I think we got a good angle there. And look at this. I can do this. Drop you there. <laughs> See if I can get that. Push them in. <laughs> yeah. There we go. We take it down a little bit. Where'd my aphids go? And then let me see if I can find some of these guys here. There you are. You can pull them over. So, and ideally, that's kind of what you want them to do is that egg lay mode, right? Like you want them to kind of go right in, right off the bat, start laying eggs. God, this music is too intense for me right now. It's so absolutely fact, too much. At first, the mites are, are more fragile, so we have to allow them some time to choose to move. And once they're, they, they're mobile, they should be quick and never lethargic. Um, 
and th that's it. When it comes to the top, uh, it may remain that as this to just to let them voluntarily voluntary voluntary release from uh, themselves from the container. Yeah. And we well, have, you, you yeah. usually like when you're advising people, just open the container and let them just kind of get out there and, and, and slowly come out themselves. We have a bigger format. It's a thousand individual in the bag. And then the bag, you could be sprinkled in desired locations. Oh, there we go. We got action. Yes. yes, yes. We got, we've got some action. Oh, yes. yes. See them. There's the wave. There's a couple of aphid. There's an aphid right there. Let's see if we could get this shot. I think uh, we got a couple, a little bit of activity around. Could, could get lucky here. So will like will aphid? So will they be able to sense the predators on the plant, or will they more likely like once they start getting attacked, they'll all kind of run in fear? Oh, come here, brother. Uh oh, here we go. Yes. Oh, oh. oh, come on. Almost oh. there. Oh, oh. <laughs> this is this is like I could watch this for days. It's like a football game, but of bugs. <laughs> oh, come here. <laughs> You're the wrong way. I also don't want to screw with the camera and like lose the shot. There's some but, first, like, um, like the, the surface fly, uh, the larva. It's kind of furtive, so it, it, they won't notice it. The aphids that it's uh, be in in their group, you know, one that's big. They're being predated by it. But yeah, uh, I think that the, the what we've seen yet it triggers their alarm uh, thing. Uh, the aphids, but they won't. Oh, they, they. I mean, they're not highly intelligent aphids. So I mean, meaning that they will run a bit and then they'll just stop and then. Do their thing and then that was dramatic for a second there i thought we were, we were gonna get a me a too hit <laughs> there oh that was exciting <laughs> almost there. almost this is like there's a reason why you don't see this happen a lot online because it's not as easy as it sounds oh yeah let's just set up a camera and some bugs exactly <laughs> <laughs> and, and and shoot it and watch them eat each other it's like it's not as simple of a concept as people hmm. so they like to to be running around the uh, exposed surfaces through like leaf tops concrete greenhouse structural components. like the structural stuff yeah yeah they the like to, yeah they, they because it, the predators that we the predatory mites that we used to release uh they have to be put on a, on a plant on the plant to be touching each other or they wouldn't travel from pot to pot you know it would be yeah. a, too much of a journey for them to try to get from if they if when you would sprinkle them on the path it, if they would fall on the on the ground i mean on, on the dirt then it would be okay yeah. but if they fell on the floor then it's almost uh, they're almost lost uh, so the, the the female will lay about 45 to 150 eggs per week i mean in three weeks but wow that's that's pretty big and how many what percentage of the population is uh female like is it like a 50 50 is there like three or four in a cell or like the 250 they're packs they're all females they're all females yes and uh it takes from the egg to the adult it takes about three weeks and the there's another three weeks of lifespan as an adult that they will have there's some action and they, right the, the number of prey they will eat depends on the size of the prey so we, we're still collecting that oh, about that. And their known predators that we know are spiders. The type of spiders. Their, their main predator is a spider? Yes. So they, 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 they get the... Um, There's an aphid. Just to just that a little bit. There's a lot of... Uh, favorite yeah. food? Their favorite food is thrips. No. Favorite but, food is thrips. Like thrips uh, young? Uh, any type, any stages of thrips. Like they're, they're better than Aureus. Interesting. Let's see if I can get it to stand. So their ideal temperature would be 25 Celsius. 
you have to translate my, my Fahrenheit. <laughs> and I, so yeah, I think you're at 75 ish there, if I'm correct. I'm sure somebody in the chat can support us with that answer for sure. Let's check your conversion right now. Where are you? So say, say, yeah, you were really close, 77 Fahrenheit. See, there's a lot of activity over there. I think we could probably move you around. Try and get something. Let me know. How's that look? No aphid. So the, we start with the egg mass. Like it lasts about six to 30 days that they will start to be uh, larvas with six legs. Okay. Then it's a stage that lasts about eight to nine days. Um, then there's the, we call it the, the real name. I said preteen and uh, teens and whatever I wanted to do it. But if we use the right terms, it's the proton nymph. Mm -hmm. Then the stage will last two to three days. Because in fact, they, they, they will pupate, you know, in between the, their stages. So half of their life before being an adult is spent as a pupa. You know, uh, in between the because so I'll start again. So, with the egg mass, then the larva, the first stage, the six legs, so it lasts mm -hmm. about eight to nine days. Then they will turn into the proton nymph that we call. Then, two or three days it lasts. Then, uh, the second chrysalis, um, it's about three to four days. Mm -hmm. and then, it starts, uh, we call it the deuteron nymph. The, that stage, then it lasts about four to six days. That's it. Then they build a, another chrysalis that lasts about two to three days. Then it's going to be the trito nymph, and there will be that stage for three to four days. So we saw some trito nymph, and we saw the last stage, the adult, and the adult will last for fourteen to twenty-one days. Fourteen to twenty-one days, and the, but they'll cycle and but in the first few days get tons of eggs out there. Exactly. And go. So let. Is there is there a crop or a plant that is ideal to pair with these with these? Uh, we don't. This we we don't. We know that they go on any type of plant. So if it even if it's a trichome, a rich tri like tomatoes or cannabis or waxy surfaces or so they go on pretty much every plant, and we can use them outdoors too. Okay. So, um, so I'll, I'll have more information soon about outdoors, not just to say anything. At the, the eggs and larval stage, they're really best suited for moist, and consistently warm locations, but they still develop at as low as 10 degrees Celsius. Okay. So, uh, let's see there. That looks like it's going to hold or an angle. See there, I've got a lot of activity just happening underneath this. So what are you, are you got some plan for outdoor planting this year? You're a little bit, you're a little bit of a, of a, of a weed geek and a, and a bug geek. Yes, you exactly. Tell, tell, tell people a little bit how much of a bug geek you are and we'll give it a little bit more time. See if we get some action. Yeah. If not, I'm going to be filming and shooting in here a whole bunch over the next week. So we'll get some shots for sure. Uh, so um, I, I'm a cannabis enthusiast since 1986. Uh, one of her friends' mother like was uh, loved, loved the plant, so she would let us grow in her in its <laughs> closet and outdoors. We would grow too. So the first seeds, uh, there was no seed bank around at the time. There were some in Amsterdam, but then we learned about them in, in 1989. Um, but we were getting sometimes some Mexican or whatever Jamaican or that we that the seeds were still viable so we started out with that and through the years i collected genetics what were they those were pretty small seeds i'm guessing because they would be closer to a sativa so you'd get that very kind of small size on the seeds exactly. very little almost black, almost black. The, 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 uh, sometimes they were mottled but i mean most of the time they were really tiny and black or brownish um we would get some that's the mexican some jamaican sometimes that would still be able to germinate that uh, had not fermented in their brick and were uh, because back in the days there was just some brick weed and ash everywhere in canada but uh, there was no real buds so people had to learn about that and first started with the the high pressure um, metal lamp then afterwards there was the high pressure lamp 
and then the first hydroponic store started to happen and the first uh, things that, that the whole garden like uh, grow your own at home that culture started and, and to be started efficient. to really develop right like that that home grow kind of the pet I, I almost call it like hobby cannabis yes. you know what i mean like exactly. it's a hobbyist kind of uh thought process there i just think it's awesome so uh, i did all sorts of work in my life but then i went back to school and uh for my passion so um so uh cultural uh science and uh, then i um i started to work for um the center for uh, research and development of uh, greenhouse producers in quebec and yeah. then i also taught food production uh the, an agricultural college at south of montreal um i also um was in working on the team that would like uh, scout uh i mean report on all the bugs that happen in all crops uh, across uh, the, the province of quebec in canada and um so i did that for a while we did many many experiments so i always been fascinated by the, i was always scouting in fields and finding new insects and but i wasn't satisfied to be working uh, at to recommend chemical pesticides and nasty things that would kill everything in the field that, that would bring in balance and the you would just see the the death there's no uh, the lack of life altogether uh, right and it would just be exactly you see this field full of life and then you see this spray thing happen and then next to you look at the same field and it's just like nothing void you, all, bad good all gone so i wouldn't sleep well at night and then uh, then my uh, it happened that uh, i learned that an exist uh, uh, heard about them they were looking for somebody and it's just bioprotection in town of montreal so yes, I went, and at first when I first arrived, it was only girls almost. We're two guys and five girls, and now uh, we're we're seven employees. Now we're about three employees, and it's really expanding uh, fast. So now I just take care of. Uh, and when I first started with NSS, I was just taking care of um, like tomato growers and tomato growers, and then they noticed that I learned I knew a lot about cannabis. <laughs> <laughs> Cannabis producer, and now I have a team with me: uh, Stefania Ontario, Nico. Oh, there, oh, we got action. Uh, Keep going. Sorry, I, I got excited. My apologies for no, 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 <laughs> interrupting you. And uh, so, and now I'm training Philippe in Quebec. So we have a team that's just dedicated, uh, passionate people that are just dedicated to help protect the cannabis plant uh, from all pets and pathogens. So. Uh, we're just working on that. So we help uh, medical growers, home growers, uh, micro producers in Canada, licensed producers from, I think we have customers now in every province. Um, it's really interesting to be working with people that using living soil, some are in cocoa, some are pro mix, some are in uh, um, deep water culture. Uh, Do you find there's a system that works best in general? Um, when it comes to the addition of predatory insects, like is living soil would always kind of be my assumption because there's the most ability to balance life. You know what I mean? Um, exactly. Where uh, I find is a hydroponic system, you're limited to only a couple and then you can't like create, uh, like I, I, what do they call it again? The homo homeostasis where things are just kind of like never bad. They're always kind of on par at a certain level. Exactly. I mean, meaning that uh, 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 we have all good customers, but meaning the level, the volume of sell that we sell to our people that are grow in living soil, mm -hmm. we, we sell less predators to them because they reproduce themselves. Like Dalosia, uh, it's still known as Apita, the rope beetle, uh, that we use against uh, many pests. They reproduce themselves very easily in living soil. All our predatory mites, yellow lies, stressful laps, and waspis, they reproduce themselves well in the living soil. Yeah. Very cool. So we're gonna try and pop a little. I saw Venisol. I think I saw Matthew Gates in the chat there. Would you be interested in in him coming on and chat? Oh, sure, here? sure. I respect him so much. If 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 you're there, brother, I'm gonna shoot uh, you uh, um, an invite, and you can come on and chat a little bit while we try and do this. I got about about thirty minutes left before we'll have to end it there, but I can definitely hopefully get an opportunity to have you guys chat. Cause I think I would love to do, I, I think I could listen to you guys discuss stuff 
mm-hmm. <laughs> and I would find it very, very entertaining. He goes, um, he really knows his stuff, and he goes in such detail and is so passionate that I really respect, respect his knowledge. Where is that chat? That cannabis education. I got so many yeah. group chats open. Him and Susan Wright, right, Evans, uh, the bug lady, is uh, they're two of my my kind of mentors. <laughs> I think that what they do, I respect her. And the the knowledge, the and they're, where they're, are you, Matthew? They're re- rigorous too. I mean, they they don't, they don't uh, well, say anything, you know. They really, uh, usually it's peer reviewed. And how do I do this again? Because I got to figure this out here. Where do I do it? Yes, invite. Invite a guest. Invite. Copy the clipboard. Flip it over. I appreciate everybody's patience. So do you have seeds planned to go down? Because I, I said I was going to shoot you some stuff. Um, mm-hmm. Here, let me come out of this for a second so that I can, you know, so that I'm not also making this just ugly as hell. I'll remove that for a moment. So what do, what do you, what do you, are you excited about anything that you're going to put in the ground? Or do you have anything planned at this point in time? It's um, old school uh, stuff, uh, Friesland Indica, uh, Friesland from the Super Sativa Sea Club. It is, um, it came from them um, 1989, 1990, then it disappeared because the DEA got into their way. <laughs> uh, and the, the guys went to exile and they've just been back a couple of years ago. And now they teamed up with Dutch Passion. So they re released. Uh, some of the old school strain they had, some haze and some uh, different haze and some of the that Friesland. They crossed it with lava cake. Yeah. Um, it's really amazing. In, uh, in our region, it really was the, the one of Matthew, the Matthew, if you, if you can hear me, I shot you a message on, because I see Zenith all on here. If you can hear me, I shot you a message on uh, Instagram in chat i followed you shot you a message to to hop on and if you if you come if you're available to totally interested in in that and now i've put down my phone and i don't know where i put it down and that's my video shooting device so that that's handy (laughs) uh say la vie my friend uh, so, what do you do? You, do you see a difference in what the market and what people enjoy for products in comparison to the states to here? Do you see a lot of that diversity in those decisions? Uh, you mean uh, what people are growing? Yeah, what people are growing, like on on the east coast compared to the west coast. Um, uh, there's more and more like um, people are. It's like. I don't know how to see it, but it's always later that happens on the East Coast. That's what happened in the West Coast. <laughs> you people are like ahead of time sometimes. Um, now it's mostly like the fruity strains are starting to appear. People are learning more like it's less of the Kush thing and whatever, like the, the, these kind of flavors. But they're still really appreciated. I mean, it's more of the, 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 the fruitiness, uh, the Tropicana and the things like that that I see uh, a lot these days. Uh, there was a lot of sort of uh, Mac and Miracle uh, uh, strain. Oh, 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 we see one there. I think so. Yes. That was kind of the area where I've been seeing some good activity. Yeah, we see one in the back. Is there one in the back? There's a cut. There's a small population of aphids of the smaller ones right there on that branch. I'm trying to get this to. I had to plug it in because I'm running out of charge. Okay. I'm trying to get it to balance. Oh, I think we got view there, right? That looks pretty. Yeah, there's okay an aphid on the bottom left. On the right. Yeah. There we go. That looks pretty good. Oh, did you see that little red dot coming from oh, behind yeah. there? See oh, that? Is that is that oh, an no? He's behind. behind that branch, but I mean that stem. Oh yes. Ooh. Oh yes. 
<laughs> maybe maybe he's acting on the Ethan that we don't see that's the other side on the other side. <laughs> he's just gotta come around maybe a bit. I think he's gotten it. Like <laughs> everybody's like, yes, 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 come on. <laughs> Destroy the aphid. Don't want to like screw with the camera. Oh, see him. Yeah. He's just yeah. hanging out there. Do you think he's probably found a snack already? I I I have a feeling that maybe we're there's action that we don't see behind that. There's, step. there's got, there's going to be a lot of action that's going to be a little bit harder to catch on, and I don't want to try and force it. No, no, no that's it. I mean, uh, oh, I, oh, there's two of them now. You can see one in there as well. I think I see one on the bottom there and one on the yeah, top. Right. So they're definitely playing in the same space, and I don't, I don't think I see them eating. No, and the aphids haven't been uh, alerted yet. They have been moving, moving around because you see on Tarot Psycho's uh, video that I posted on my LinkedIn page. Uh, it, uh, you see it when it happens. Uh, what they they appear the, the, in its system, they go after the first uh, nips. Uh, the other <laughs> are they're trying to leave. Any mantis? Not do you, so. Will you guys be doing man? I think we talked about this before. Will you, do you guys no. do spring mantis drops or? No, finally, no, um, no more wild ladybugs and no more Chinese. Matthew Matthews. Gates, right there. I'm gonna add you in, Matthew. There's something that happened. Oh, hi, Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello. So there was a meeting with the Association of Biocontrol Producers and the uh, USDA AFIS, and to uh, also make things uh, accepted easier with the uh, uh, Fish and Wildlife Service in the USA. So uh, to introduce new predators, I mean, to be able, like, let's say, to sell any cysts in the USA. Um, so because of that, we're going to be really, really strict. And I was never uh, for uh, wild harvest ladybugs, the conventional one. I never found it was ethical. And now with the climate change and the wild, coast, the West Coast wildfire, it changed the whole thing. Uh, we haven't had any in two years. And um, the, our friends, oh, 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 you see one crazy there? It's coming over. Uh oh. <laughs> this is pretty close. Yes, it's almost this is there. pretty close. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> oh, I think the aphid is starting to notice or something. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Matthew. How are you doing? It's good to see you. Welcome. And how are you doing today, brother? I'm doing well. I'm doing well today. Um, you know, this is my kind of content. <laughs> <laughs> this is exactly what I want to do on a Friday night. Is right. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, uh, do you know what aphids these are? You just tore these out of your uh, uh, place or something? Yeah, they're they're in my small indoor 4x8 tent. Um, oh, okay. Also, you didn't I'm place pretty... them there purposefully, though. They just sprang no. out. No, I let, I've been letting them kind of take over a small space to try and get as much action shots as possible for this specific e event. Um, but I'm, they're just, they're my basic, oh, here it comes. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. they're my basic Maybe. average. Yeah, I think so. I think it's going to happen. They're my, they're your typical. Oh, veg there's a one, two up in the back. I think we got the spot here. If we're going to get action, it's going to happen right here. And I like I said, like right. it's a lot uh, harder to film though than uh, ladybugs or something like that. I would just say, put, you know. <laughs> uh, Claude, uh, can you remind me? I actually don't remember off the top of my head, but do they, a lot of mites don't have eyes, or if they do, they have like very reduced eyes. Do you remember if whirly oh. geeks have, whirly geek mice have eyes? I said very. I don't. I do not remember. I don't remember either. I mean, I don't, I never, uh, inquired about it um it's a very good question i would ask not that they necessarily need it <laughs> no, no, that's it no because they seem to be uh f feeling things with their let me know if i get a little bit better focus is that looking really good that looks pretty good i think oh, that's yeah. that's Although... a great shot oh uh -oh. What? No, no, no. No. Here. <laughs> ah. Very suspenseful. Oh man, I mean exactly. that whirly gig movement, you know. Exactly erratic zigzag patterns. 
and they're always Would running. Would you be able to identify which aphid these are from that photo there? Or do you know? Or like, uh, you know, I, not I don't like know the process for the whole, whole thing. So like how aphids are them. aphids are really difficult because you can get like different color morphs and things. So it's hard to be super confident. Uh, sometimes you gotta know the host, and that can be really helpful. Um, you know, uh, so are these on like, um, do you know what kind of plant they're on? I want to say they're dianthus. I I, I, I I don't know for sure because it's part of a, a blend of very many things and the plant's pretty sorry looking after its attack. So it's like, <laughs> it's it could be a, a few different things at this point in time from what I can tell. I see. If but if I'm correct, if I have a good look, yeah, I I want to say it's a type of dianthus, if I'm saying that correctly. Or no, it's not. Sorry, I've got like a few, like a hundred at least different varieties of plants in my space, so it always gets a little bit hectic. Um, I mean, you must have a garden. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go dianthus. Dianthus. Yeah, I'm gonna go with that. I'm starting there. But it could be, yeah. it could also be a, an odd kale of some sort um, that happens. I try and keep as much variety in there as possible. Did I scare him off when I moved the camera? Maybe. No. Mm -hmm. At first, like they're kind of fragile, they're kind of uh, not shy, but I mean, if you have to let them time, then they, they will like be really mobile. Eh? Just, so, uh, Matthew, may I ask, like, what kind of is, like, do you guys see, will you see this type of a product coming into the States? And, like, have you seen this type of, how, and how that all happens and flows in comparison? Like, I would love to know a little bit about that, because it's such a, I feel it's like, something that never gets talked about, right? I feel like uh, what Claude was saying was pretty accurate, and probably he knows better than I even, because um, I think he has to be more, uh, not to speak for you, but I feel like he's more... Um, uh, like forward facing on that, on that facet of how that kind of works out. I know that I know this much. I know that it can be very, it is often very, very difficult. And I know that there's often a lot that has to go into like making sure the biocontrol doesn't go after off targets that we're worried about. And like the samurai wasp, for example, I know there's a lot of um, research still on that one. Uh, there was a hoverfly that got a, an award in uh, Europe. I think, uh, Claude, you're, you're familiar with this? Yes, yes, yes. We, we are distributing uh, Euclidus uh, Americanus. Uh, it's an uh, American uh, cousin. <laughs> uh, it's why yeah. we distribute the other, the other one in Europe only. Uh, yeah, it won an award. It's really um, in cannabis, though, it's hard to use. Uh, for me, right now at Analysis, I just take care of cannabis production. So it, uh, the QAs, they don't want to see any other flowering plant inside the facility. So the adults have nothing to, uh, no pollen or nectar to feed on to before they go lay their eggs. So we found a solution by putting flowering plants of some type inside the cages, and then we let, we let them feast on nectar and pollen, whatever, and then we release them after that. Uh, but still going on that, that trial. Uh, still a lot to learn about the surface fly, uh, the other fly with uh, cannabis. Uh, we're using it in other crops, uh, but in uh, with the cannabis, uh, I still have to learn about it. The same with uh, the predator midge, Aphidolites uh, aphidimiza. I outdoors it's really efficient. Indoors, mm, it's, I think the wind the wind speed is too much. We need a walking wind speed, you know, so that uh, it's better for parasitoids or uh, midges to uh, to uh, fly around. To yeah, little minute details like that are easy to overlook. I'm glad you're bringing that up too because. Yeah, not all the flyers are the same for sure, and you can definitely make it less, um, exactly. <laughs> just less friendly for them, right? Exactly. The overfly itself, it's no matter if you put the fans at full speed, they could be flying almost in an hurricane, and they are very, they're really strong flyers. Uh, but the rest, the midges and the the aphids, uh, oh no, it's not the same thing at, at all for them. I have a massive population of hoverflies that show up, like couple times during the year and they just bloom out and it's just like a lot it's it's a ridiculous amount of them and I, I always used to wonder if it was a problem and then i like got into starting to look in the bugs i'm like okay this is awesome i have this awesome 
round of hoverflies that just seem to come back every year. I know that they can cause issues and problems. I have a question for you both while I have the opportunity. And Little Red might, oh, there's so much activity in the background. I'm just waiting. <laughs> like, there's so much. There's so much going on there. Um, what's, with, what's with peppers? Like, why why pepper plants, ornamental pepper plants? Is there something in the plant that, like, that, that draws predatory insects to lay eggs in? Is there some sort of chemical that that attracts them is there something along those lines i think they just have more flowers that's just it they have more yeah they have more flowers so they're more prone to have a, a, a new lab or you just want it like a, we use it when i arrived at Genesis, we used to sell ornamental bell, uh, bell, uh, peppers but um not anymore i mean we're, we're not again a gardening store, so we can stop that. People can get their own, like, and their own seeds and do their own thing. We still do carry becker plants. Uh, we do uh, grow barley with uh, the Bercherioti fields, I think the name in English is. And um, so it's for Aphidius colimani mainly. Uh, and we have to, anyways, reintroduce Aphidius colimani after a while because there's a kind of uh, evolution that happens after they, they will start to shrink in size and they'll be uh, less efficient. I mean, they'll be kicked by the uh, aphids. So we have to, after a while, reintroduce them, but some people like it. There was a we, even one licensed producer of cannabis. The QA let them use the banker class that uh, bought them from us uh, in BC. But I think they got rid of the problem. They haven't bought them in a while, but uh, I mean, uh, so banker plants is another uh, way we could uh, maintain some aphidus population or anything like that. But we, we still uh, have, we, we used to sell mullen plants too for uh, the cyphus, but we, we stopped that too. So we now we just have the banker plants uh, in demand. It's easy for us to do. So people, what they do when they want the banker plants, they, they, they will sow their own wheat, oats, barley. Barley is the best. Uh, and then they, um, in a little small tray, like I do for my cats, as a, for for a wheat grass, tray, like kind of a, for them for their, their for their health and their uh, fur balls and whatever. And they um, so we, they they start their own tray. So when they receive our tray that we send them, they just the other tray next to the one they just brought it. So that way they'll transmit. So they'll maintain themselves their own uh, banker plants. They don't have to reorder from us. But they will have to, like I said before, they'll have to reorder after a while some effigies to, to reboost the, the size of the population because the evolution goes fast in the the world. Like in the, 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 I mean, the effigies, I mean, uh, the insect world, I mean, the parasitoid, the thing like that, they, meaning that they, after, uh, I don't know if you know, uh, um, I mean, the generation it would take to, to, for them to shrink in size, but. Uh, it doesn't happen after uh, after a while, so that's why we we, we will reintroduce. So I just wanted to add about the uh, with the banker. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, there it goes. Yeah, <laughs> every time, man. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll just say this that um, you know, in in a few, definitely not representative of everything, but in a couple of research reports that I like to pull as an example for the banker plants and the peppers that um, I'm sure Claude knows this very well um oh is this it the uh you know i think one of the two but the two benefits are you got a lot of flowers and then you got as an ornamental the flowers last longer yeah and they don't fruit as quickly so like you kind of get this double one two punch of like lots of flowers so lots of repositories of pollen and then for a longer period of time and that's kind of like the the super benefit of that not the only so that's plant the main that has thing that, that they're going for is the pollen for feeding right they want they need something yeah. to eat on that's right. Okay. That's right. And they don't have to spend a lot of resources to getting those proteins that they need to make eggs and stuff if they're females, for example. Mm -hmm. So the really good mites that you that that are, they're all female that you're applying is that um, is that because of um, uh, do they have some Wolbachia or something? Is that how you're able to achieve that? If it's a trade secret, I understand. Uh, and then, no, I cannot tell you it's from my bio. <laughs> Because I, I think I, I had a meeting with them last yesterday, and I asked them, "Are you worried that the other guys are going to do it themselves too?" Uh, yeah, they, they didn't answer, but I, they, the no answer meant uh, 
they might, you know. Oh, we got a lot of activity, eh? Look at that. Oh, yeah. Emla, I got uh, all these reps from BioLine, from Copper, from BioBeth. They all want to be my friends now on LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, That's good. The, the, the ones that are less shy, the, the Moroccan guys and the Copper the rep, <laughs> the, the, the French guys, so they started to chat with me in French and they. Oh, oh, look at that big, ugly yeah. fucking piece of shit there. Sorry. It can get bigger. It can get bigger. Yeah. I, I still working on my creepy crawly things. Matt, so was there a point in time where you're like, I really love bugs because I've got Claude. I'd love to hear yours. Like, is there a point in time? It's like, you know, oh, I yeah. I usually, I'm gonna I usually tell that. people the, so like as a, as a young child, I, I definitely like to go out and, and be in the in the wilderness and and um but i was born and raised in southern california so like you know it's not as lush as like the pacific northwest or other parts of the earth um you know it's kind of dry here and but but it, you don't get really a, a big winter and stuff like that so there are some things that are going to be kind of around all the time even when it gets a little bit colder in the winter um as a young child i was also in the boy scouts so i would hike a lot um and that definitely helped a lot uh and i also tell people that um as an avid fan of the pokemon franchise as a kid not not really as an adult but as a child um the the person who made pokemon or, or one of the really important creators they apparently they loved doing the same thing i did going around in the caves and looking for insects and that kind of stuff here here we go here we, oh, go. Here we go oh oh that oh, was like a he's on the branch a, he's gonna he's going he's scanning around mm -hmm. i feel like it i feel like Jeez, he made shoot. contact but like like pulled away but i don't know that was yeah. very that was very fast i wasn't sure yeah exactly I, they will go for the nymphs first the, the, i mean the, the younger stages um uh, we tried it uh, that's the trend on galio and no here we go here we go here we go here we go oh yeah oh, oh. yeah that's it again ah damn it <laughs> It needed to find the smaller one on the other side of the leaf, I think. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. just, they're just kind of looking for the little ones first. Yeah. So that friend had, uh, he has hemp, cannabis, and vegetables in his uh, greenhouse. And they, they had trips, other mites, and they fit. And they went first for the trips, and then they started to eat the, uh, the youngest uh, aphids. But I'm Next still time, I'm just going to throw some aphids in the container first. <laughs> yes. this the other way around i think i've done this the wrong way around um just saying right because <laughs> I, I i hate to cut this short bit i do actually i have to be at a meeting in like five minutes it's okay <laughs> we want that. totally understandable yeah I, 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 I could literally do this for the next couple hours um but we'll have to do this again sometime yes uh because there's a lot of neat stuff going on and i would love you know you guys have now connected on the background i know you you, you guys would have a lot to talk about i'd love to have you both on and chat and see sure where the conversation goes at some point in time um but unfortunately we have to go so do you guys want to do like the usual weird social media thing where you tell people where to find you and stuff and then we'll yeah, wrap it we always plan on the 29th that we have mm -hmm. we, we planned one on the 29th of march Yes, 29th of March is our next episode where you're on on as a guest. Why don't we, if you'd be okay with that, we could have Matthew, maybe if you'd be open to joining as well. And and you're doing your own thing too, Matthew. I saw uh, already with uh, on the Future Cannabis Channel 1. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, I appreciate that. Um, and uh, I'll, I guess I'll let you talk okay. about where we're going to hear you first because you're the, you were the main guy here, Claude. <laughs> uh, so... Yes, yeah, so I'm with Anatis Bioprotection. So Anatis is a Canadian-based company. It was founded in 2005. At first, it was just research and development. It, our founder, Sylvia Todorova, an amazing woman, she came to Canada. She left Bulgaria. Uh, she it was coming to the state, but she, they, they had um, some gift. They, they were uh, awarded uh, 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 traveling to Cuba. So they stopped in Montreal, and then she never left Quebec. <laughs> so, um, she, she's open and done much French and English, and now she speaks six languages. She has two doctors, and she founded an ethics, an amazing woman. So it was a woman based um, company, uh, Canadian based. Um, and then she found the first uh, uh, spore of Bovaria bastiana uh, and the Anzero tree strain. So she elaborated BioCeres, our product, uh, BioCeres WP, the wettable powder, 
BioSurge CC. So they're certified organic Bovaria Bastiana product against HP to advise strips and uh, so the first year was just getting registered, get the label on it, get the studies done, all sorts of things. And then she started the first um, predatory mite farm in Quebec, so Montreal. So she started to rear Cucumeris, Neocilus Cucumeris, then Neocilus Palacis. Then it just went on and on and on. So we added, uh, we now do green lace wings, we do Stratulaps, which is uh, also known as Nipoaspis. So we do all these kinds of bugs. Now we're, uh, when I first got that at Anatis, we're seven employees, now we're more than 30. So we we just started Anatis USA weeks ago. Uh, so we, we uh, produce, distribute, and sell bugs uh, across Canada. And we're about to sell some in the States too. Uh, we do advice, we train uh, the staff, we do scouting when we can, we do uh, Bug and pest ID for free. All right, here's the here we go. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. He doesn't want to be shy. We just like they just traveled a while and they got thrown around a bit, so it doesn't really surprise so, me. There's also a lot of options, I think, for them right now too. So I don't. They might not be be being. They might be a, being a little bit picky on what they're deciding to pick on, picking easier fights, maybe. I don't know. Sorry about interrupting you there. Go ahead. Oh, okay. So uh, people yeah. can find me on LinkedIn, uh, Claude Robert, uh, uh, on LinkedIn. So you pronounce the Claude Claude. <laughs> yeah. So Claude, it's okay. Uh, people, uh, it's all sorts of ways. Uh, I've heard people uh, pronounce it Claude, Clown, Claude, Cloud. <laughs> so no problem there. Uh, but uh, so Claude Rabar on, uh, and that's just my prediction, A N A T I S, and uh, all in one word, by prediction.com. This is a website, a new website is coming online soon, in any week now. It's been postponed a couple of times. Uh, we're on Instagram. We're on uh, all the other social media. Um, I forgot my my address for my Instagram account. <laughs> oh, the drip. I'll I'll have that thrown into yeah. the into the description of this video um, for everybody to check out as well. So I'm you got new. some cool stuff in there. So I, I did some. Um, I did growing the, my first uh, one of my first experience was uh, with the grower stores uh, with Kenna Biosoil. Uh, we did the uh, best during the pandemic. And then I did the uh, growing the great outdoors with the, the Grow Up Expo conference and expo in Canada. Uh, their virtual events. They did um, so. I did. I was one of the panels invited, and now I, I did my first show with you guys, and I'm really excited. Uh, I really love to to, uh, to share the knowledge and share with the other great uh, people like the, that have uh, lots of knowledge too, like Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> Collaboration. I appreciate it, Claude. You want to give a little, little, say a little shout out there, Matthew, and then we'll, we'll I'll, I'll close it out. And uh, I got to run to this meeting. I'm Absolutely, sorry. I'll be succinct. Um, thanks. Uh, I appreciate you having me on. Um, I am found on zenthanol.com for professional inquiries for consulting. Uh, I have a Patreon where for one dollar at least a day uh, a month you can come and find me and ask questions about IPM. And uh, I also have a Zenthanol YouTube channel where I post content kind of like this, actually, and also on Instagram and uh, Twitter at SyncAngel, S-Y-N-C-H, like synchronize. And that's it. Um, please go to your meeting. I don't want to hold you up. And uh, I really enjoyed this. I look forward to it again. Yes, awesome. Thank you so much, Matthew. Thank you so much, Claude. I look forward to it. We're going to get lots of photos and videos out there. And maybe Peter will uh, pursue me. To oh, wait, wait, wait. There's a uh, <laughs> we saw when a fit is moving and we start crazy there in the back. Yeah, yeah. There's movement. Yeah. And there's a couple it, that are just approaching. Our, funny name is crazy with two E's. Crazy Mike. So that's how we market that uh, to find a name. The crazy and, and it, the other name the other code name for it is the whirly gig, right? Yeah. That's the common the common is, use term. Exactly the whirly gig might and the, the Latin name is and it's just back around. So oh, now and, and it's this from an axis. This is awesome. I like, I'm hanging, like, I'm hanging on by a thread because I'm like, if I wait one more minute, will I get the shot? But hopefully yeah. we will, we will get one at some point here soon. So they're uh, available in the Canada right now through us. And yes. we, we are, are working to get them available in the USA. 
and like is this small the small package gets like goes pretty far right like your basic yes. small package is like we produce so easily they lay, they lay, they lay their own eggs so easily uh we have 50 individual package 250 and a thousand that's the format and how, how far does 250 go like what square footage would you use that to cover uh, we're still working there's still a lot of uh uncertainty with the um introduction rates uh because um it goes from 250 uh, i mean one per square foot or like one per 10 square foot or it, we don't know yet it depends on the prey depends on the, the condition for it to produce uh we're still working on a, a lot of uh uh to be totally in point like uh, it's always it's never also it's always a gray area like introduction right it's always like uh, we have them to to have a base so we know where where to start with but it's always depending on the condition the crop the uh the, the cycles the uh, the limits, limits the levels that. everything all those little bits and bobs well anyways thank you guys again i appreciate it. i gotta get going so i'm going to end the show